everything's better with visual aids. So, uh, this is back in December-ish, 2015. Might have been late November-ish, early December-ish. Anyways, I was sitting in my office, you know, thinking about my bike, probably looking at pictures of my bike, just wishing I was riding my bike. Now in the conference room, Christmas mayhem was starting to take away. It was uh, completely full of just like presents and gifts and clothes and just all the stuff that people donate for the um, kids at the shelter to just have an awesome Christmas. And so anyways, there's, you know, volunteers and it just so happens that that was, uh, you know, outside of my office. So everyone kind of convenes in there and I'm just sitting in here just, you know, like I said, wishing I was on my bike. And so everyone in here is uh, wrapping these Christmas presents, volunteers and stuff. And this woman, Lori, is out there and she's wrapping Christmas presents and she's volunteering and I have no idea who she is. But uh, someone said bike or something about a bike or just, you know, might have sounded like someone said bike. So I ran from here over to here, pulled a Kramer straight through this door and said, who's talking about bikes? Bikes are awesome. And so Lori was like, oh, do you like bikes? And I was like, yeah, I like bikes. You got a problem with that? And she was like, no, you want to go to Haiti with me? And I was like, Haiti? Yeah, cool, let's go. And so then she was like, well, you know, I have this cargo load of bikes getting dropped off in Haiti sometime in February. I need someone that can, you know, build bikes to come with us and help build the bikes. And that was the end of it. We didn't really talk again for months. Kind of went about our lives. You know, I almost had forgotten about it. And uh, then... Okay, so this is... Okay, so then it was like February-ish. You know, the following year. And I was riding my bike in Susquehanna. It was awesome. Lori's over here. She's in Bel Air. And this is... The Haverty Grace. So Lori gave me a call, or I called, one of us called the other one. Something happened, but we were on the phone together talking. She was like, yeah, so you still want to go to Haiti? And I was like, yeah, that's freaking awesome, let's do it. So she was like, okay, I'll email you, you know, the info about when to show up at the airport. We'll be there, it'll be cool, we'll build tons of bikes. This is the uh, survival solar Amy gave me. You never know when it could come in handy. It's really good for narrations. Right here, we stopped to uh, get some water at this place. It was a walled off kind of grocery store. Just all this stuff that had expired from, you know, the States and other uh, English speaking countries because you could see the uh, labels and stuff. It was just full of it, and outside there's guys with uh, automatic and um, semi-automatic rifles guarding the place. Pretty crazy. Okay, so then uh, mission day rolls around, and these three, Rob and Lori, they're like a thing. You know, married, and kids and all that stuff. Like an item, hot item. And then there's Amy. She's cool. She's a friend of Lori's. Just really cool people. So they carpooled over to the airport. Um, I got myself to the airport. And then we were waiting in this line. Long line. Plane somewhere. But just all these people in line. I happened to walk up right behind these people. One of them had a bike hat on. And they just, you know, exuded awesomeness. So I was like, hey, are you who I'm going to Haiti with? And they were like... We're going to Haiti, are you Tom? And I was like, yeah, I'm Tom. They're like, oh, cool, you know, I'm I'm Amy, Bori, Rob, blah, 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 introductions. And I was like, okay, well, I'm hungry. And then we flew to Haiti. Okay, so this is Haiti, aka the Republic of Haiti, the island of Hispaniola. The mission was up here, the airport's down here. This is all the water, because it's an island. There's these insane mountains. 
all across right here. Just crazy, crazy mountains. So we landed. The guys at the mission up here didn't really include in their, you know, correspondences leading up to this. That at the airport, three bridges were out that week. So we had to go all the way around, switch back up the mountains, all the way up, way up high to where the mission was. This isn't really a scale, there's like a whole country here. So after we made it through the airport, through the uh, sweltering heat, no AC, um, and we paid the uh, tourism fee for our tourist pass, we found our uh, greeter, the guy waiting for us with the sign, and he started to lead us out the uh, back doors of the airport through what's probably one of the most chaotic scenes I've ever personally been in. Never really quite experienced or seen anything like it. We uh, quickly got separated. People I were with were a little bit, um, I think, more stressed out by the situation than I was because I was just enjoying the uh, ridiculousness of it all. We were trying to make it probably about 50 feet to where the um, truck and uh, Guy Richard, talk about him later, but the Guy Richard was waiting for us. We uh, had to constantly rip our bags back out of other people's hands because people were trying to physically take them from us. Um, and uh, uh, it, it was kind of intense. But yeah, so then we made it to the truck. Richard was waiting for us. This is Richard. Now, Richard is an incredible guy, probably one of the most amazing guys I've met. He uh, is a young guy, I think he's like 36, has a uh, family, wife, and kids. Just amazing, amazing person. He took it upon himself after being uh, selected for this special like Rebuild Haiti government-sponsored project where they selected all the bright minds from Haiti, put them together in a room, gave them some scholarship money, um, you know, taught them how to go back to their communities and kind of rebuild um, community by community. Well, it turns out Richard is one of the, uh, I think, three people out of like 30 that stayed in Haiti after that. All of them left the country, moved to other places like the U.S. and Canada. But Richard stayed. He um, dedicated his life to reclaiming, um, basically, probably the side of a mountain, just reclaiming this village and uh, slowly but surely kind of building a mission and taking kids in, working on education, medicine, um, you know, just you name it, he's doing it in this community. So it was pretty amazing uh, getting to bum through Haiti with him. Pretty crazy truck ride. Um, we uh, piled into this truck made out of the bumper to bumper uh, traffic blocking the um, airport. It's just pure gridlock at that airport, but Richard knows people and everyone seemed to listen to him, so he just kind of glared at some people and made some hand gestures and then. It was like the Red Sea opening up for us and we just drove. Once we got <laughs> got underway, it was even more awesome. We were um, going down these crazy roads, like one lane roads, but three to four wide driving and riding motorcycles and bikes and running and walking all different directions. Um, you know, people with goats over their shoulders and six to a moped with chickens and goats and just crazy 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 um, amounts of chaos going on there's no stoplights there's no signs there's no street names there's there's nothing it's just dirt paths up through the mountains that we were cruising along on at just blistering speeds and we were catching air at some points it's ridiculous uh, made our way up the long way hours and hours and hours deep into the night um, through just some really really amazing uh, just places to kind of experience. Um, after dark, the uh, diesel smoke gets so bad you can barely breathe though while you're running up these roads. There's a no waste management, so they line all the trash up, um, all the garbage, plastic, whatever, you name it, they line it all up on the road and light it on fire with diesel. So we kind of had to breathe that in for hours while we were driving up the mountain to the mission. One last thing about um, drive up there, the uh, checkpoints were pretty intense too. There were these checkpoints 
come down around uh, these mountain roads, back roads, and there'd be no warning at all. Um, hardly any lights unless they turned them on when you pulled up. And there's just, you know, armed, quote, unquote, police officers. Um, really, they're just kind of checking to see if there's anything they need. I think if we had uh, not been with Richard and his crew, we probably would have not made it too far. We probably would have not kept anything we had packed to take with us. But uh, we made it through without uh, any hassle, really, thankfully. Um, it, was, it was always pretty intense, though, when you pulled up to uh, that spot where they're standing there just kind of looking in the windows at you. Um, absolutely helpless. I mean, there's nothing you can do in that situation.